Okay, now let's close all of this out. And let's head over to the client. Now add a new item. And name it client.cs. Using system.net. Using system.net.sockets. Enum commands string equals zero and image. Public delegate void on connect event handler client sender bool connected public event on connect event handler on connect public delegate void on send event handler client sender int send public event on send event handler on send public delegate void on connect Oops, on disconnect event handler client sender public event on disconnect event handler on disconnect socket socket public bull connected get if socket not equal to null, return socket dot connected. If not, return false. Public client socket equals new socket address family dot internet work socket type dot stream protocol type dot tcp. public void connect if string IP address int port if socket equals null socket equals new socket address family dot internet work socket type dot stream protocol type dot tcp socket dot begin connect IP address port null null void connect callback isync result AR try catch socket dot in connect AR the reason we have the try catch is because if a connection is not made successfully and it times out, it will throw an exception. If on connect not equal to null on connect this and connected. Public void send byte data int index int length socket dot begin send git converter dot get bytes length zero four socket flags dot none null no. Socket dot begin send data index length socket flags dot none null no. So the first thing this does is this will send the size of the byte array first so our client I means so our server knows how much information it should be receiving. And then after that it'll send 
the actual data. Void send callback iasync result AR try catch int sent equals socket dot end send AR if on send not equal to null on send this sent Exception ex console dot right line send error ex dot message void disconnect try catch if socket dot connected socket dot close socket equals no if on disconnect not equal to no on disconnect this now head back up to send and set our sin callbacks. And our client is now ready to go. Now let's head over to the form and integrate some things there. Using system.io client client btn disconnect plus equals oops no, click plus equals tab tab btn image dot click plus equals tab tab btn send text dot click plus equals tab tab btn connect dot click plus equals tab tab client equals new client client dot on connect plus equals tab tab client dot on send plus equals tab tab and client dot on disconnect plus equals tab tab Let's just get rid of these. We plan on implementing. All right, now go up to on disconnect and just place message box dot show disconnected. Now on send invoke method invoker delegate OBL data sent dot lbl data sent dot text equals string dot format data sent sent down to on connect message box dot show connection Accepted if connected. Now down to BTN connect if client dot connected client dot connect. Go one to seven dot zero zero dot one and port eighty one ninety two. Now head down to Oops, now let's add a couple of new vo um, voids here. Void, send text, string text, and void, send image, string path.
Now, binary writer bw equals new binary writer new memory stream bw dot write of integer commands dot string bw dot write text bw dot close byte data equals of memory stream or cast to memory stream bw dot base stream dot to array bw dot base stream dot close bw dot base stream dot dispose oops we already called close and client dot send data zero data dot length data equals null now what this does is this of course creates a new binary reader so we can write text um, integers, longs, etc, etc to a stream in formatted order so first we write our command which is going to tell the server that hey there's a string that we have ready for you and then it writes the text right after it closes the stream so we can get the data puts the data into a byte array make sure you always dispose of the memory stream or of the stream so you don't have data floating all over the place and then send the data and then set the data to null now let's go down to send image memory stream ms equals new memory stream like before binary writer bw equals new binary writer except this is going to be done slightly differently from above byte b equals file.readAllBytes path bw dot write of integer commands dot image bw dot write of integer b dot length bw dot write and then finally the actual bytes bw dot close and reuse the variable b equals ms dot to array ms dot dispose and then send our information b zero b dot length now let's head back up here in btn syntax just call syntax text box one dot text and using open file dialog o equals new open file dialog o dot initial directory equals environment dot get folder path special folder dot my documents you don't have to do this this is just a preference of mine if o dot show dialog equals dialog result that okay send image o dot file name in btn disconnect just call client dot disconnect and now everything looks like it's good to go let's test this out build your projects Let's connect. Connection accepted. Hello world. And the program can now distinguish between text and an image. Oops. 
Oops, some data got lost there. That'll be discussed in the next tutorial. That'll be discussed in the next tutorial. Wait a minute, something's wrong here. Remove this code. That's right, we're trying to add something new. Now, let's try out our programs again. And now, as you can see, everything is working just fine. It was that new thing I added that screwed it up. And if we disconnect this, disconnected, and client disconnected, clear data. And it reconnect again and resend information. And that is how you create an asynchronous client and server.